All right, folks, you've tuned back in to Starbase Radio. This is August 31st through September 3rd. Let's look through the summaries of what's going on. A lot of work happening around Starhopper out there. Spoilers for the end of the video, but stay tuned to see what happens. Some chain down points there, those big uh, D-rings, basically, that they've welded into the side so they can positively secure it for transport. Those things are beefy. It's actually where you're going to end up chaining Jack to it if they ever take a cutting torch anywhere near it. There's the old quick disconnect. Compare, if you will, the old hopper quick disconnect there in the middle of the screen to the new quick disconnects. Here are the steel Newtons, <laughs> the crush cores, the catch pads. There's probably 50 awesome names that y'all came up with in the last video, but uh, installation work continues over there on the chopsticks on Tower 1. As you can see, chopstick work continues. The chopsticks are the new OLM. So instead of work on the orbital launch mount continues, it'll be work on the chopsticks continues. So much reinforcement happening over here, trying to get these things ready. It looks like so that they could survive a catch or at least have some possibility of, of succeeding at the catch. One of the interesting things here is to look out for the uh, safety lines that the workers clip themselves to. You can see those red lines, there's upper left a little lanyard sort of clipped into it. You'll see it on the lifts as well where they, they've got the safety railings around the lifts. It's like a primary uh, fall, pre pro fall prevention piece, but they also usually clip themselves in, at least they're supposed to clip themselves in with the harness as well. But that little, you can sort of see it there in the upper left, that little red thin line, they clip that while they're walking back and forth on top of the uh, chopsticks. There's the booster quick disconnect. It's behind the uh, ring wall box, <laughs> the job box there. It's supposed to have tools in it. Partially painting a vertical tank here. Very few vertical tanks actually left around the uh, launch site there. They're melding together. You can actually see the connection between the office building and the Star Factory going all the way up to the top now. And over in the high bay, that's ship 31. Notice the tiles go almost all the way to the tippy top now. Looks like just, just the cap needs to be added to the top. We've been watching the work here for a while. You can actually see the pin, the lifting pin hole there just underneath the flap. Sometimes maybe you need to rewind back and go look at something that I just pointed out because there's I'm not supposed to point out everything that happens in the videos, but I'm just interested in it all Watch the booster QD hood upper left of the OLM there clamps closed Some storms coming through we're starting to get into a little bit of rainy season out there at Starbase Sometimes slows down our own ability to work on our sites and cameras more tile work there at floor 21 on the scaffolding. That lift moving all over. I want to do a whole video on the lifts. I want to go to a place that trains people to use those lifts. And I want to be like, what's this button for? <laughs> sure are a lot of lights and switches up here. Like, they have like power and hydraulics and all sorts of different connections uh, up on those lifts. So you're not trailing extension cords over the edge when you need to plug in your tools or whatever. I actually just want to ride a lift up and down. I want to learn how to safely operate a lift. Can I say it that way? See the pins there, too, in the place where there are no tiles. Hey, good. Nice enhance there. Those tiles actually sort of clip into those little stubs, nubs, studs is probably the word I was looking for. The yellow piece you see is uh, part of the dampener. Damp damper. Sorry, I should not say dampener. People will come after me in the comments. And here's more prep work on Starhopper. That lift is behind the backside, it looks like, but uh, clearing things out, disconnecting things, the groundwork as well. Here's the SPMT, is they're test fitting it. Look, they have the SPMTs, then they have those big sort of cribbing pieces, 
And then they've added these little, they're not jack stands, but they're like little extension stands. So they can actually raise Hopper up and down using the vertical motion of the uh, SPMTs themselves. The SPMTs can kneel and raise themselves to, to level themselves primarily, but they can also pick up loads without having to need having to have a crane pick the load up and put it on top of the SPMT. So it's sort of dual use there, uh, changing the individual height of the wheels to level the load over terrain and actually using it as a elevator, a, a lift itself. It's almost like a forklift where the SPMT itself is the fork. There you see those D-rings in operation, strapping Hopper down to the SPMT is itself. Huge thing with the SPMT transport is a uh, center of mass. So a lot of times you'll see them put extra weight down low on the SPMTs and then connect the entire system together so the center of mass is nice and low. So you have a more stable system as you're transporting it as opposed to all the mass up at the top. Of course when they're traveling around with boosters and stuff like that, that helps them out because they have all the mass of the engines down low anyways. And just sort of naturally, those uh, vehicles have a center of mass that tends towards the aft of the vehicle because there's just more equipment down there. Work continuing on the chopsticks once again. That's really coming together nice. Look at all the uh, shiny catch plates there. <laughs> Steel Newton. I think Steel Newtons was the one I liked the best. I really, I'll put in a request. We really need to get some uh, really clean audio of the cables whipping around. I'm really surprised the cables that lift the chopsticks up and down are still in working order because they're constantly, twang isn't really the right word, but every time I see them moving, I can hear that noise in my head. I don't know if we have clean audio of that somewhere to, to show to y'all in a future one and just really point out, hey, that noise you hear, that's the cables actually flapping together. They moved everything around. They didn't like the test fit. You can see the SPMT and the cribbing and everything is, is gone. And they brought in the excavator to try and, uh, I'm going to say level out the ground. They're not really digging Starhopper out, right? They're sort of trying to level the ground here so that the, the SPMT can lift it up and move it out unassisted. Because, yes, the SPMTs can kneel. It's sort of like a kneeling bus. Have you ever walked up to board a bus and the bus goes, and the whole bus sort of kneels down, and then you get on it and the bus lifts back up again and then starts driving? The SPMTs do the same thing. They can kneel down to get under a load, then they can lift up to lift the load off the ground. Another fantastic uh, overcast shot there from Mary. We, lit we call this the reflecting pool. That's what we say. Oh, yeah, put the camera by the reflecting pool. Back to another shot of Ship 31. There you can see. See the hole right under the flap? That's where the pins go in to stabilize it when they're lifting that thing up. I guess the stabilizers are lower. But those are the main lifting pins just under those forward flaps. I'm really curious, the, the line, the tileless line there, that they're sort of working on it. I think that's for expansion, where they s still have some connections there in the background and they're not quite done with that. I don't know, y'all let me know. Aha! What's going on here, Kite Cam? How are we doing this? What magic? Certainly we're way too low to be in a plane. The interesting comment here is that the TFR that prevents drone flight does not extend all the way between Starbase and Massey's, like between the production site, launch site, and Massey's. There's a big hole in the TFR there. And our property that we own there near, we call it river, it's near the river there, um, is actually just outside of the TFR. So Jack rolled out, see the Rio Grande on the right-hand side there, and got some aerial shots of the, I'll say shopping center, the sort of development project that they were working on that seemed to be paused a little bit. This doesn't get quite the breakneck speed that the uh, launch infrastructure or factory infrastructure gets, but uh, Jack flying the drone outside the TFR there to get those cool shots of what's going on. Here you can see the SPMTs are back underneath Starhopper. 
They scraped that ground, leveled that ground a little bit, put the cribbing back on, those big those Lincoln log looking things. There you just saw the SPMT kneel down a little bit. Watch, there it went again. And then you saw it level too, right? End to end, it leveled itself. Those things are just so cool. It's such a cool idea, like technology applied to become a useful machine that we use for things. I probably don't need to repeat that work continues on the chopsticks here. It's just ants crawling around on the ant mound that is supposed to take us into outer space. I guess technically catch stuff when it comes back from sending other stuff to outer space. But whatever. I digress. Those big Franken sticker reinforcements there. They really must have got some test data that said, I don't know if these chopsticks are going to live through a catch because they have made an awful lot of uh, changes to them here. Back over to the carriage, shot from Mary. It's just work just happening everywhere. It's not like, oh yeah, we just have to reinforce these joints and we're done. It's not a full redesign, but it's almost like a chopstick version 2, maybe really version 1.5. Because they haven't, uh, they're trying to fix the existing design that already exists in the real world, right? By adding all of these reinforcements and new bits and bobs to it. Is that close up of that booster quick disconnect? And there's Star Hopper being shuffled around. Remember, go back and hop between the two points in the video. Look at the Star Hopper disconnect. It's right there on the lower left hand side of, of Hopper. And then go back and hop to the video where we just looked at the booster disconnect and look at the difference between the two. But here we go. Hopper getting picked up. All sorts of activity. Coming out onto the entrance. Got the cones there to keep cars from parking there and make the turning job more difficult. Here comes the SPMT Ballet. In the rain, no less. You can see it was actively raining out there while this was happening. Hopper strapped down. Lots of cribbing in there the stands. Of course this time lapsed a little bit so it looks like it's wobbling a little bit more. You don't really see that wobble in real life. But just watch those, watch the wheels of the SPMT. Such coordination that allows these things to be, st I'm going to use the term ridiculously. It's engineering, it's not ridiculous, it's, it's something that we've designed, right? But they are just very cool pieces of machinery. Not anything new. You actually see them in use uh, a lot of places. Uh, ULA, please don't hit me in the comments, but ULA has a transporter. Um, I actually don't know if it predates SPMTs, but it's very much the same thing. It's just got a driving cab on the front of it, and it uh, can move things around just like this. They use it to move the uh, Delta IV heavy cores around. I visited and got a rundown of how that worked, and it was very, very similar to the SPMTs you see here. Of course, that was more of a custom product as opposed to a commercially available modularized product, which is what the SPMT here is. The SPMTs are. Now, it didn't go too far. It just made it across the street in the area we call Danger Lot. So I personally like to thank SpaceX for installing a sturdier tripod that we can mount cameras on here in Danger Lot. Hey, swing for the fences, right? Uh, I'll go ahead and send an email asking. <laughs> Probably not, though. That's usually where the trailer is, uh, the camera trailer is for the launches. But that's going to wrap up our Starbase summary here. Many thanks again to Mary and Jack and all the SBL operators. Thomas, appreciate the edits as always. I'm Doss. I'll see y'all later.